All Stars in three is a wrap. And congrats to the crowd again for winning. It's three times in a row. <laughs> Wasn't even close. Um, but fortunately, we have a, a magnanimous bug boss adds and is willing to talk about a couple of the bugs that he found in a show and tell today. So I'll keep this short. Uh, Ads, take it away. Hey, guy. Uh, nice to meet you. My name's Ads. I hope you uh, enjoy this like short talk. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to come watch this. Um, yes, yeah, so my name's Ads. Sorry. Uh, I live just outside Toronto, Canada. Um, I officially go by the handle Gangrene Tim Tatum. It's terrible. Uh, but so please ignore it. It's kind of stuck. I go by ads in the book crowd discord and slack. I'm always up for like contributing, collaborating, sharing and learning. Um, something that really means quite a lot to me. So I'm also a proud member of the hacker advisory board representing the global hacker community and providing expert technical guidance on like platform strategy and vulnerability trends and like research experience. So effectively act as like a liaison between hackers and bug crowd leadership to advocate for community needs and help shape programs. Uh, it's an awesome initiative, something I kind of hold very valuable to, to me. Um, and yeah, something I, I really, uh, really, um, uh, take seriously. So yeah. Um, just appreciate being part of this like community. Uh, you all are awesome. Congratulations to the uh, to the crowd as well. Like, um, pretty sure you you dominated. So, <laughs> uh, nice work. So, I'm just going to go through uh, two kind of uh, uh, quick bugs that I found during this uh, during this event. Uh, bit of full disclosure without making excuses. <laughs> I was actually traveling with no laptop for a long portion of the event. So I actually kind of found this on like my dad's very, very old laptop and using curl and uh, dev tools in like a very old version of Firefox. <laughs> um, but I, uh, I effectively came home, I verified everything with, with, with burp, which, or Kaido, whatever. Um, after I kind of came back and validated it, but I've got two closely coupled bugs that I'll go through today. The first being sensitive data exposure, which I was unable to chain with another submission for broken access control uh, in the form of uh, privilege escalation. So just like a really quick intro, I actually have built quite a few uh, BERT suite extensions. Um, one of them is called BERTference, which is like a really bad take on a BERT suite and inference as in like calls to a, to a LLM interface. Uh, it's a non-native non AI epic integration. So before the BERT suite AI enhancements actually came in, uh, which ships your proxy history to an LLM of your choosing. So the model sees the requests and responses. Um, I actually didn't use this vulnerability to, uh, I didn't actually use this extension to find the vulnerability, but what I actually did was I came back and tracked back when I had access to my own laptop and verified that whilst the bug was still valid, I was it, the model was actually able to find it. So just kind of giving a bit of food for thought about um, other tools to potentially use out of the box. And um, if you haven't tried it, I, if you want to check it out, I hope it, I hope it helps. So just to give an, an idea of what it kind of looks like, the reference uh, extension uh, interface is very similar to like the proxy history in both like Kaido or Burp Suite. Um, effectively like the models taking inputs and uh, requests and responses. And it's doing like almost like a security review, kind of like, I guess like it sounds really cliche, but like almost like a, a hacking co-pilot buddy, which is kind of, gross but you kind of get the idea right <laughs> um and basically the model is able to find the exact same thing that i'd actually found earlier where uh, the api response contains a raw api key so um not a great practice in software development um, and a clear like sensitive data exposure right um so that was kind of fairly simple um like very simple bug the next one I'm going to talk about is broken access control. Um, so with broken access control, just a bit of context, it allows users to perform actions beyond their intended permissions. So like you've got vertical, horizontal, and conditional uh, are like the most common attack vectors where you can elevate privileges or manipulate, destroy, or expose sensitive data as like a lower privileged user. So just a like little hard tip from me, um, if I can share any experience is always to read the developer and end user documentation. If you find, think you found something, validate any discrepancies or weird anomalies. Um, and from the UI contradiction here in my experience, this is how the sensitive data exposure was like really obvious as well as the fact 
that it just being like, I guess, like a common thing. Um, you can clearly see the UI here saying that production keys cannot be revealed again. However, in like my APR response, I was actually getting a different result from the back end as to what was being shown on the front end. So just to kind of uh, a, a quick track back as well, going back to the broken access control. So anyone who not who hasn't heard of Burp Suite Bandas, they're awesome. And basically, like they're a programmatic way of being able to perform several kind of checks or manipulations of what you see in Burp Suite. So they allow you to like filter requests and responses um, in the HTTP history. It lets you add columns in different sections and also lets you calculate and replace values in requests. So like super useful. Um, I've copied the link so you can like rip the code and like throw it in burp suite as well and kind of do the same testing if you would like um but as a huge tldr what this check does it looks for detecting non-standard or custom authentication schemes so like for instance it does like a proxy history fit uh proxy history filter which reveal authorization headers that are not null but don't start with like a conventional JWT, like EY, like you would find like a standard like JWT token or a JOT token, whatever you call it. Um, and effectively what it does, it helps identify potential exposure of credentials uh, via just like unconventional auth authentication mechanisms. Um, and that can be super useful when like, especially looking through sensitive endpoints. Um, certain API routers, the way that they're, they're written or whatever, they may not fully check the difference between looking at like an API key as looking like a, like a bearer token, right? So my uh, bird suite, the uh, proxy history kind of like blew up like a, like a deer in headlights. Um, but super useful for me because when I was I was unable to do, I was able to understand better what type of auth authentication authorization was expected from the application. And from the like the list of URIs, I can now get a, a construct a list of payloads that I was able to test my methodology to see if like the API key and the bearer were accepted and kind of compare the difference. So doing like almost very similar behavior to Orderize, if anyone's used that Burp Suite extension, it's actually a, a great tool as well. Um, great for testing with IDOR and stuff. So when I kind of went back to said about read the documentation, like that's one thing why it was really helpful to me and why I do think it's really helpful in general is the web application in this, uh, in this instance actually had a concept of teams and user roles. Um, so using a non-privileged user account, I was able to actually validate and observe that the team owned API key was being shown in, in bug one. So Bug one, I was able to, I guess, like expose the raw API key value, but that API key was owned by both the user and the owner in the team. That was kind of like a, a feature as in a user, uh, an owner can create a user and then he, they can like kind of grant them an API key, which are allowed to use under that account. Um, from there, I had that payload con um, pay list I constructed in the prior step. I noticed that there's like a few endpoints which were in direct relation to the user and team role privileges behavior. So that's where it's kind of talk about the sensitive endpoints. Sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, so one of the one of the juicy bites from my observation uh, of start, uh, observing the proxy history and application using the owner role was the ability to invite members to a team. So owner is allowed to uh, invite members to a team, but a user is not allowed to invite members to a team. So first thing I did was I tested to see if the unprivileged user was able to successfully get a 200 OK when using that same request for replacing the value next to the authorization header from the bearer token of like the owner user to like the API key, um, theoretically for both users, right? And in total, I had like three endpoints uh, or sensitive endpoints, which were all performing like downstream uh, sensitive functions. Um, at the time of this, I'm right, I'm awaiting uh, the ASC team's guidance on whether this is like valid as like one bug or individual bugs. But to give you like an idea, it's obviously it's redacted to uh, for some confidential information, but. You can see here in the API request that I'm effectively just replacing the, the JWT token 
uh, which will be like a normal request, which will be sent through the web app to changing it to that to that API key, which is a is it's a I guess like a low privileged API key at this point. Um, I was able to invite a user um, and get like a two hundred response. So as a user, I could actually invite another person to the account, which is obviously not attended, uh, not intended. One thing I obviously did as well was that I tried to like escalate my own privileges um, by making myself an owner or like inviting another owner. The API actually was checking that in fairness. So obviously that was kind of a bit of a limitation of, of this submission. Um, but like I said, I didn't really get a chance to test it much further. Uh, and then, yeah, so you can see here like the listed invites. There's just a bunch of like <laughs> spam accounts that I've been testing. Um, but that, yeah, that's basically pretty much like a TLDR of it. Um, and then just kind of giving a an, an understanding of what that looks like. So I was able to like invalidate an invite and also delete a user as well. So that's kind of like those downstream sensitive actions, which shouldn't be performed by a user account. Uh, as per the intended functionality application. Yeah. Um, so yeah, thank you again for taking the time. I've um, I made these slides available like on my GitHub if anyone is ever interested or like please feel free to hit me up. Bug Crowd Slack is probably the best because it's just a super cool place to hang out. Um, and it was actually kind of funny because when I was actually trying to like verify it, I, <laughs> I kept getting like Mac OS saying it's full of malware, which is kind of hilarious. So I don't know what it is in this, um, but yeah. Anyway, I uh, thank you for uh, attending. I hope you enjoyed it, uh, the sh short talk. And uh, yeah, kudos to the crew again. Y'all rock.